Excuse me, out of the way, please. Right, is that an enemy tank there? Is that the guy who captured Bravo? I think that was a friend. No, that's not friendly. Is he dead? He's not dead. That was a ghost shell. Motherfuck. What? No way. What are you doing to me, Gaijin? Don't you dare. Good. Finally. Oh my god, that one didn't even register properly either. You sort of go through him before it registered. Now you. What? You are shitting me. That is three fucking ghost shit. Motherfuck. You know what's actually really funny? If you go to the Wikipedia pages for the Leclerc or Challenger 2, both of them have a whole section dedicated to how their documents were leaked in the War Thunder forums. We made it, guys. <laughs> when it comes to top tier tanks in War Thunder, just through how modern they are, Gaijin have gotten themselves into a wee bit of a problem. The major nations, basically America, Russia and Germany, make a ton of different tanks, different variants with new weapon systems and meaningful upgrades. The quote unquote lesser nations don't. That leaves Gaijin with a problem. Either have those nations simply not extend to the upper limit of the BRs in the first place, which is actually what I've suggested in the past, or strengthen them in other ways. One of the ways you can do this is by giving these nations any minor variation of their existing top vehicle, and no matter how much or how little difference it would make, to strengthen their lineups and while I'm not entirely sure I agree that that's a good way of doing it, it sort of suggests that a good strategy is for players to just dogpile their lineups full of one type of vehicle, uh, which you shouldn't, any more than three of one type, and you're just limiting yourself unnecessarily, but that's what Gaijin have done here. In the upcoming major update named Winged Lions, three new top tier MBTs are coming to the game. The Challenger 2 TES, the Leclerc Series 21, and of course the big boy, the Type 10. By the way, I had a sample of one of our mugs shipped out. I should have done this ages ago. I did for all the other merch designs. But, uh, it's upside down. <laughs> Weirdly, this doesn't happen with any of the other designs or items using this same image. So, if anyone else has ordered a mug, please let me know if this happened to you or if I just got the dud one. It's the Australian Spitfire, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. So I decided to cover all three of these new tanks in one video, even though the Type 10 is a much bigger deal, it's an actual new vehicle, and it will be incredibly powerful. Because all these tanks are kind of in a similar boat, being quite possibly, at least as far as pushing the envelope of increasing capabilities of more modern tanks, uh, these could be the last main battle tanks each of these nations get. Italy is already complete in that regard with the Ariete PSO, of course with vehicles like the Centauro 2 or Draco to add. Uh, Sweden is in a similar boat, and China have one tank left in the Type 99A. We are starting to see the ends of War Thunder tech trees. Doesn't that sound insane? To start out with, let's discuss the Leclerc, which is probably the simplest of these tanks to go over. The Series 21, or Sexy, is the most modern serial version of the French main battle tank, and brings several improvements over the Series 1 and 2 we have in-game, most notably being increased protection and the Commander's Thermal Sight. Built between 2003 and 2006, the Series 21 was designed with protection against tandem charge ATGMs in mind, like the Attacker or AT-9 Spiral missiles carried by tank destroyers like the Storm S or helicopters like the Mi-28 Havoc. This was done by the addition of new semi-reactive armour modules to the front and side turret, including around the autoloader carousel, and possibly the hull as well, depending on whether or not we get the further add-on armour kit for urban warfare known as Azure, which I think would make sense given the new Challenger 2 TES, as well as the already seen Ariete PSO. The Series 21 will also add third generation thermal sights for both the gunner and commander, but unfortunately it doesn't look as though it will be coming with any new ammunition, something I think top tier French players would enjoy. The OFL 120F2 round, for example, was made of depleted uranium and should improve over the current F1 round, which is the same DM43 round fired by the Leopard 2PL, by about 30 to 50 millimeters. This gives it over 600mm flat penetration, which is becoming a standard for these Max BR tanks. Notice, for example, how because it's being fired from a longer gun, the OFL 120 F1 round has about 40mm more pen than DM43. F2 should be about that much of an improvement again. If Gaijin plans to bring tanks up to 11.0 alongside aircraft and helicopters, which I think it was ridiculous to not do already anyway, 
uh, then the Leclerc Series 21 should kind of get this round, allowing it to really compete and fit at that VR. Otherwise, I think it should remain at 11.0, as it's only a very small improvement over the S2. At the same time, given that the gap between the AMX30 Brennus and the base Leclerc is so great, 8.3 to 11.0, it might be worth taking the OFL120 F1 round away from that tank in order to lower its BR, down to 10.3 or 10.7, since there'll still be two top performing French tanks. Three is kind of unnecessary given the French lineup, which consists of a good helicopter, though not the best, uh, but more importantly the Crotal SAM system and the Jaguar A. More importantly, the basic Leclerc being a lower BR would give the premium helicopter and the Roland Sam more of a place, as currently they both have to be dragged right to 11.0 in order to be used. Now moving on, let's take a look at the second of the new tanks, which is the Challenger 2 TES, and no, this is not specifically the version known as Megatron, though it's true Megatron is based on one of these tanks. The TES, or Theatre Entry Standard, is the designation for the standard armour upgrade kit applied to Challenger 2 tanks since 2008, which is based on experiences learned in Iraq. A further upgrade to the armour over the Challenger 2F version, the TES features new explosive reactive armour side panels made by Israeli company Raphael over the Dorchester blocks that make up the side armour of the current versions. Now, as for what this will actually do for the tank, the answer is pretty much nothing, given that single charge heat warheads are practically never seen at that BR outside of stock tanks. Even L23A1, which is the worst round the tank has, and in fact the worst kinetic round of any 11.0 tank, is able to go through multiple of those Dorchester side screens, angled, at distances of 2km, and one-shot the tank through the explosive ammunition stored in the hull. An additional ERA isn't going to change that. Now, for tanks using stock heat, this will be a nightmare to take out, but no more so than the 2F version, or for example any of the top Russian tanks, which have the benefit of being far more mobile and with far smaller weak spots. That's right, while it does next to nothing for adding real protection to the Challenger 2, the Theatre Entry Standard Armour Pack will increase its weight by several tons. Though it should be noted that in game, the Challenger 2F has the exact same 63.6 ton carb weight of the base variant with the Dorchester 2E pack, which makes no sense as the DL2F pack has about 6 tons of added equipment, this variant bringing an extra 4 or 5, meaning it weighs in at well over 70 tons. Yeah, she's a chunky lass. Now this will further reduce the mobility of the Challenger 2, which is already the slowest of the top tier MBTs, so realistically the TES version should actually be worse than the current 2F, which in turn isn't really any better than the base model at 10.7, and definitely no match for the Leopard 2A6 or M1A2. Now it is better on technicality and that it protects the crew from stock heat rounds better than the DL2 E pack with the ERA lower glacis and no turret side add-ons, while not currently suffering from any weight disadvantage. But in actual gameplay, that does nothing for you since you have to assume every tank you fight is spaded. Now that's not to say that the tanks aren't well armoured, they very much are, and they do like to eat any stock heat rounds that are fired at them, but the additional armour the TES version has won't actually give you any real world improvements. It looks from the dev blogs and the dev server as though this model will actually gain a significant amount of weight, which makes me wonder if Gaijin will fix the 2F version not doing so, meaning that neither will actually be better than having the base model in a 10.7 max lineup, with a couple of backups you can get for free and the hope of some down tiers, given that 11.3 is now the top BR. In other words, the fact that they're at a higher BR than the base model isn't necessarily because they're better than it, in fact the TES should actually be worse, uh, but because having them increases the scope of your lineup and allows you to be more effective. Now the idea of adding these types of tanks is so that your backup tank is as effective as it can possibly be, and unfortunately it doesn't look like that's actually what's happened here, considering that the TES model will be incredibly slow, weighing 74 tons. The TES model won't bring any new ammunition, and while people have brought up L28A1, which is a round these tanks could very well get, the L28 round was an export round originally made for Oman to replace their stock of L23A1 ammunition, and actually doesn't outperform the current Charm 3 round given that it has a lower velocity. 
It's a tungsten round the British have taken to using themselves and does of course outperform L26, but L27A1 or Charm 3 is still the best round the British are ever going to get. Now, what this model could bring however is a new engine, which would help offset that weight disadvantage if Gaijin decided that this is viable enough which I personally think they should, given for example the F5C having flares, the SPSK having R3Rs, or the Harrier GR1 having SRAMs, and the Lynx AH1 having Hellfires and Stingers, and of course the Leopard 2s using DM43. And what I'm talking about here is an upgrade that was applied to the Megatron Tech Demonstrator, which is a single tank used by ATDU as a testbed for the practicality of potential upgrades to the Challenger 2. One of these upgrades in 2017 to 2018 uh, was the integration of the MTU 833 1500 horsepower engine from the Challenger 2E. While this was never adopted as a standard, the engines fitting into the Megatron tank did also serve to prove that it could be easily installed on any Challenger 2 in place of the regular 1200 horsepower Rolls Royce Condor, drastically improving power to weight and therefore acceleration. Top speed would still be limited to the same 60 kph, but having more responsiveness and making up for the increased weight of the TES pack would make it an actual upgrade from the basic Challenger 2, which again, currently, you've got no real reason to upgrade from. Then there's the issue of the missing CITV, which both this and the current 2F version should have, and which again, if that is modelled, actually give these things a tangible benefit to justify the higher BR, which basically means you'll never get down tiered. On these iterations of the Challenger 2, the optic attached to the roof-mounted machine gun actually acts as a CITV, being completely controllable by the commander so long as the loader isn't using that machine gun, in exactly the same way that the M1A1 AIM does things. The main thing I wanted to talk about when it comes to this tank though is what might come next, and before I say this, let me preface by saying that we are switching completely from analysis and overview to full speculation. We've already seen the Black Knight version of Challenger 2, which was shown off in a Russian trailer earlier this year, and the main draw of the Black Knight version is its hard kill active protection system. Now, I believe that same trailer also showed off the Scharnhorst and the Type 10, which we're now getting, so that kind of further validates the idea that Challenger 2 Black Knight will eventually come as well. Here's the speculation bit. When you look at new ranks that have been added to the game, they've generally come with a unique mechanic or factor, or I guess you could say gimmick, to kind of distinguish them as new. When it comes to aircraft, for example, rank 5 is your jets, rank 6 brought supersonic jets and air-to-air -air missiles, while rank 7, which was added most recently, brought pulse Doppler radars which hugely changed air combat. In ground vehicles, rank 5 isn't so obvious anymore, but back in the day when it was the top rank, its defining trait was Heat FS and the one APFS DS round we had back then on the T62. Rank 6 brought composite armor and ERA, and rank 7's trait was really thermal optics, even though some rank 6's do get thermals, just like some rank 5 jets get missiles. Now, considering that even the MiG-21 MF is a rank 7, It'd be a wee bit ridiculous if something like an F-15C or a MiG-29M were also in that same rank. So my assumption is that Gaijin plans to eventually add an 8th rank for aircraft with active radar homing missiles like AMRAMs and R-77s etc. And the unique trait or gimmick for rank 8 tanks will be hard kill active protection systems like we saw in this year's April Fools event. Now, I would have laughed at this idea last year, and even in my analysis of this year's April Fools and what it might have been testing for, I said I doubt Gaijin will do hard kill APS, but now I think it makes more sense. If Gaijin do want to go that route, then we're looking at the M1A2 SEP V2 for the US, something we've had pretty much as good as confirmed already anyway, and SEP V2 was tested with Israel's Trophy APS at Fort Bliss in 2018-2019. M1A2C or SEP V3 is most famous for having it, but that tank also has armor upgrades we just know nothing about. Then there's the Leopard 2A7V for Germany with either Trophy or the domestic German active defense system, as well as the same armor upgrades that were applied to the Stratzfarm 122, but no new firepower. DM63 and 53 have the same penetration. Uh, obviously the Black Knight for the British tree, and the addition of Israel also makes more sense if this is going to happen, Israel being a huge proponent of active defense systems with Trophy and Iron Fist, and they would get the Markovar 4M. 
Russia would be controversial, and in fact Gaijin have said in the past that they'd never add this tank, but they've said the same about a lot of things, rank 6 jets, premium jets, capital ships, etc. Uh, so I think the T-14 Armata with its Afghanit hardkill active protection system might actually be on the cart. Again, I would have laughed at anybody suggesting this as late as last year, in fact midway through this year, and a lot of people are going to say that I'm being ridiculous for saying it's even possible now, and to be fair, I might be, but honestly, I just think it makes sense, knowing Gaijin, as it would bring a ton of money for them and cap off the game really nicely. While, as I said in the last video, I don't think they really care about the actual game anymore outside of it being a cash cow. The Black Knight would undoubtedly be the worst of all of these tanks, but provided it's not top BR, that's okay, and the fact that some nations wouldn't get a rank 8 at all, like France, Sweden or Italy, I again see as being alright, if their tanks are lower enough to the max BR that they can actually get some reliable down tiers. That's just what top tier is for the minor nations. Moving on to the real big boy, the Type 10. Now this is an insanely modern tank, in fact this will be, outside maybe the Armata, the most modern new MBT we're ever going to get, not a variant or modernization like M1A2 SEP or Leopard 2A6 or T80 BVM. This is a fully new vehicle which entered service the same year War Thunder was released, 2012. <laughs> that is insane. Now I'm sure we all know the standard stuff about the Type 10, as it's one of those vehicles that players who want it haven't shut up about for the last two years, and I'm not saying they were wrong for that, uh, since it's been a long time since a Type 90 was added, which was the last new top tier MBT, and it isn't the most effective anymore. The Type 90B being effectively the exact same thing, like the Leclerc Series 1 and 2, or the Type 99 Stage 2 and 3. Even the Ariete PSO is more unique from the base Ariete than the Type 90B was from the Type 90, so realistically it's been more than three years since Japan have gotten a proper new top tier vehicle. And here it is. For anybody who's unfamiliar with this tank, it was designed not just to improve upon the Type 90, but also to be more practical. Since Japan only has a self-defense force and not a military that can operate internationally, they need a tank that suits specifically the Japanese environment, and that means a lot of bridges that a tank as heavy as the Type 90, even though Type 90 isn't heavy by Western standards, uh, can traverse. The Type 10 has a new form of nano crystal steel and ceramic composite armor, which is designed to give at least the effectiveness of the Type 90's array while reducing weight. Keep that in mind, this is not a tank built to improve on the Type 90's armor like the M1A1 Heavy, Leopard 2A5 or Challenger 2 over Challenger 1. The goal of Type 10's development was to create a more technologically advanced tank, allowing many internal components to be made lighter than those on the Type 90, computing and battlefield management systems for example, which were a large focus of this tank and it's one of the world leaders in that area. But as for defense, one that would not necessarily surpass but equal Type 90's protection for a lower weight class, coming in at 44 tons on the base variant. That being said, the armor scheme is superior to Type 90's in various respects, mostly being side protection and chemical energy protection, with a wedge-shaped turret similar to that of the late Leopard 2's, which works in a similar way, though not quite to the same effect. Nonetheless, the frontal turret of Type 10 is very strong against chemical energy warheads, and the armor of the side turret is also much stronger than that of Type 90, which might help you when you're wiggling to prevent enemies shooting your breach, that you don't accidentally show too much of a side turret profile and get penetrated anyway. Especially with all your ammunition being in the rear of the turret, where the Type 10 has a cassette style autoloader. Of course, as with all top tier tanks, an actual side profile shot is going to go straight through you like a hot knife through butter every single time. The firepower of the Type 10 is upgraded over its predecessor, unlike the other two tanks in this video, bringing a new APFSDS round also designated Type 10, which as far as I've always been led to believe by what sources do exist, was based on the German DM-43, but in game has closer penetration to DM-53. The Type 10's gun is a domestic Japanese one, so ballistics, chamber pressure, etc. will be slightly different to the Rheinmetall L44, which the Type 90 uses, but that should only change things by a few millimeters. 
Now, I wasn't aware that a round as long as DM53 could fit into the Type 10's autoloader, which, by the way, appears to be the same speed as that of Type 90, rather than being faster, at least looking at the dev blogs and the second dev server. Maybe that changes. Initially, it did sound as though it would be faster, three seconds even, which is ridiculous, uh, but we just don't know yet. Now, whether Gaijin have actually gotten some better source material to prove that the Type 10 round is DM53, not DM43, or that it's just a new round entirely, domestically made, or whether they've taken advantage of the lack of source material to just conveniently model it as DM53 to inflate the Type 10's BR and make it seem like more of an upgrade, I don't know. Like I said, there is very little information on this tank, and Gaiden's research is obviously usually better than mine. Now, while the Type 10 is a downgrade from the Type 90 in engine power, 1200 horsepower as opposed to 1500, its lighter carb weight means that it retains that magical 27 horsepower per ton ratio, and has a top speed of 70 kilometers per hour. Given its advanced transmission, it can also hit that same speed in reverse, and while this top reverse speed won't really matter, you should be faster to accelerate in reverse than a Leopard 2 or Abrams as well. Basically, you'll be able to shoot and scoot very effectively, and you've also got that Hydra pneumatic suspension for helping you crest ridgelines where you ordinarily wouldn't have the gun depression. So to boil it down, what you have is still an incremental upgrade over the Type 90 in how you'll actually use this thing on the battlefield. Though it does have a lot of benefits, CITV interestingly not being one of them for such an advanced tank, uh, it's still going to primarily focus around nimble movements and that super quick reload. In other words, the Type 10 is to the M1A2, Leopard 2A6 and TAT BVM, what the Type 90 has always been to the M1IP, Leopard 2A4 and TATB. Of course, Type 90 is 10.7 now, and it's actually very good there still. And if Gaijin does mean to decompress tanks to 11.3, then the Type 10 could definitely be up there. Its only problem will be a lack of lineup, with Japan obviously not having a top tier SAM currently, not having the best ground attack potential, lacking guided bombs or air to ground missiles, and the top Japanese helicopter, the AH 64 DJP, lacks a missile approach warning system, making it a lot more difficult to use than the other top end helicopters. Now, I'm not sure what could even be done to fix that, at least until Japan receives a later jet like the F-2 or F-15J, which are probably at least a year away if not more. The DJP is the most modern helicopter they could get, and it's certainly not bad. Could be 10.7, not that it would matter since Type 90 is the thing you play it with. Uh, and the only other Japanese anti-aircraft platforms that could be added, like the Tansam or the Chusam, require multiple vehicle setups in order to actually work, with one launch vehicle and a separate radar vehicle to guide the missiles. Now, personally, I've always thought that these multi-vehicle setups could work for AA, with the player controlling one vehicle and an AI following close behind. But this is starting to get off topic now, and is something I want to talk about in a future video anyway. For now, I'm going to leave it there. I hope you're excited about the new vehicles coming this update, and I'd like you guys to comment below if you're going to grab any of these three new top tiers, and if so, which one or ones and why, as well as what you think about the likelihood of Gaijin doing rank 8 as the end point of this game. I did say I was going to live stream the second dev server here on YouTube, which unfortunately we didn't get to do, but I will be live streaming here on YouTube this Friday, Saturday, so tomorrow, anyway, uh, so I hope you'll join me there. I've just got a couple more things to sort out first. Until then, I want to thank you lads all for watching, and I'll see you on the battlefield. The BMP can be considered the very first of its kind of infantry fighting vehicles, and it's still in widespread service today. The easily recognisable machine has spawned a wide variety of variations, and served with over 65 nations since its debut in the mid-1960s. Like the MiG-21 of the skies, the BMP has proven an adaptable and timeless platform, remaining useful to this day in some very modern military. 